Hello and welcome. Today we're checking out Scald Against the Black Priory. This is the prologue version that just hit Steam here a couple days ago. And uh, certainly worth checking out. Uh, I've actually checked this one out before, about a year ago. Uh, and a lot has changed. This is sort of your typical classic party-based RPG. Ultima style is sort of the uh, the theme going here. Uh, being developed by one, just one person. And uh, I've been following the development for a while here, obviously, since I did a video a year ago. And I, uh, I've been eager to check out this this demo they've, they've been putting out. So uh, let's put a link. I'll put a link below and, and we'll check out uh, Scald now that it is, uh, is out there for everyone to play. So let's check this thing out and build ourselves a character here. So this is party-based. We're going to build one guy, but as the game progresses, we'll find more folks to, uh, to join up with us. We can be either a cleric, a mage, a rogue, or a warrior. Uh, we'll go with cleric today. Our main attribute is going to be presence. I never play clerics. I, I dabble with both the mage and the rogue in my test games, just sort of getting my uh, my sound, my, my fingers ready for the uh, for the recording. And um, they play kind of like you would assume they would. So let's let's build ourselves a a cleric with some presence. Let's go up to like twenty. This is this is diplomacy and attunement. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm a diplomatic guy. Yeah, very diplomatic. There we go. Uh, this is what? This is lore. This is fortitude. I probably could use some. I could probably use some hit points. Yeah, that's probably a good, good idea. Uh, stealth thievery. Uh, now I'll find someone that will do this kind of stuff. But it'd be nice probably to hit people every once in a while. So let's go and grab some strength here, and uh, we'll, we'll hit a few folks. There we go. I like those stats. A couple eights. What a character. Uh, my name is uh, is is Nook. Look, the cleric they call me. Uh, here's my character right over here. I'm going to have... I want some... Oh, yeah, some white hair. And I'd like... Oh, yeah, a white shirt. Yeah, don't get any blood on it now, okay? And, and some, some gray pants. Can I get, like, black pants? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, I want to be the guy with... Yeah, that guy right there. Okay, venture forth. The dark raging seas of the outer isles. A lone caravel struggles against the winds and waves. The moan of creaking timbers, the tang of preserved fish. Your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness of the dimly lit ship's hull. Suddenly, something strikes the hull and the ship rocks violently. Your heart begins to pound and the feeling of unease grows in your stomach. You're going to rise, well rested and ready to go. Get ready. To, uh, get to your feet and become aware of agitated voices shouting up on deck. Something is not right. You should make your way to the top and get a bearing on the situation. Okay, let's go. All right, so this plays out... Um, Turn-based style. There is uh, key bindings here, which I've got pulled up, so we can know. So I know what I'm doing here. But basically, we go in. You know, I got a map. Um, I've got all my stats are here. I got, I got a, uh, a traveler garb on on myself. Uh, my stats are over this way. We'll get experience and level up in some at some point. I have the ability. I am a divine spellcaster, which gives me bless, adding a small bonus to my companions. Who's my companion? I don't have one yet. I guess we can have six people on this party. I thought it was four. Uh, we can Divine Glory. You channel has a chance to... A chance of stunning your opponent. Okay, we got a Divine Hammer. Equal to my Presence score. That's a lot. It costs me a lot of, of stuff, though. And I can heal. Okay. Uh, my, my quest is to investigate what's happening here on the Zephyr, which is my ship. Uh, I have got some other factions that we'll, I guess, we'll figure out who these guys are at some point. And there's my map. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's arrow key around and, and explore this place here. Uh, we got a torch over here. We got a chest, which has a, some leather armor. I'll take tonics and uh, and, and, and a knife. Um, I'd like to put my my tunic on. Oops, did I just put those down? I put them back in the chest. Oh, whoops. Pick those back up. <laughs> okay, put those on. Uh, daggers in my hand uh, uh, and leather armor is on my body as well as my garb. Okay. Let's go walk over here to the door. To your surprise, you realize this door has been locked from the outside. It doesn't budge. Perhaps you could slip the lock with a thin blade. Okay, so we got a dagger in my hand. I could use my strength and bash it down, but no. I have a dagger. I'll slip the uh, dagger through the gap and lift the lock and get out of here. As the door swings open, you can now clearly make out cries from the deck above. You should make haste. Okay, we'll see what's in the other room. We can right-click here to kind of look around. We get, I see ship. I see crates. I see a chest. I see bones. There's enemies nearby. Battle erupts. Okay, so on my turn, this is a turn-based thing. I can just hit enter and it auto-resolves everything, but these uh, these dirty rats that lock the door on me are hanging out over here. So I can do a couple things. I can walk up to it. i got three actions. I can walk up and swing my sword. I can cast a spell. I do have that divine hammer, which costs 20. I've only got 24 attunement. Um, I can stun for six. Yeah, let's just stun that guy. There you go. Take that, buddy. Okay. 
Oh, I didn't mean all the resolve. Hang on, hang on. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I want to, I want to walk. Stop that. I want to smack this guy. I'm gonna, you know what? Do I have enough to, uh, to cast the, uh, the uh, cast the big thing? I don't. Oh, all right. We're just going to smack things then. Take that, rat. I hit him for one damage. Okay. One more damage. Okay, okay. I'm really more of a, um, uh, have, uh, members of my party with me. Can I do anything with I can bless. I can heal myself. I wish I could use that, but I need 20 for that. Uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's blind that guy. I failed. Okay, okay. Well, this is a great start so far. Let's smack that guy for three damage. Take that, you dang rat. Okay, one rat down. I knocked him out. Rat number two. I got him. Okay, 112 experience. Let's loot them all and take their tails and get out of here. We got some, uh, rat parts. Um, let's go light these torches here. There we go. And, uh, anything in here exciting? No, let's get up on deck. Okay, you emerge on the ship's lower deck. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you become aware of a hulking figure standing in the shadows. Nook! There you are at last, growls a rough voice. Uh, lunge at him and attack. I don't know what that does, because this is our new party member. Uh, let's just freeze and listen carefully. Feeling jumpy? The brute growls with a smile. Roland! What are you skulking in the shadows? He chuckles. Shadows suit a face like this just fine. No matter, there's trouble, and you're needed on deck. Now. Why, what's all that noise up there? Island's in sight, but the guilders refuse to land. They want they want to turn back. Uh, why? Only superstitious bilge. They claim they saw something in the water. Either way, our boys are about to show them some very real steel. Um, but if we land, we can't get our shot at the girl. And no one gets paid. Listen here, I know our boys better than most. We've hired them to go to Idra and kill. If we don't pay them, things will get bad quickly. But the sailors are bloody terrified. They claim something is hunting us. Um, let's go. Wait, there's a few sailors up ahead. Rattle is a pair of rabbits. Oh, is our way past him? There's two doors ahead. Take the left one. And we should be able to sneak past them without any trouble. Uh, anything else? Just get off this boat. Okay. All right, Roland has joined me now and part of my party. So I'm in charge. I can hit Q and switch out who's actually more in the show here. But uh, it's me. I'm fine. Uh, I can switch out who also who's what, where and what, which we're all good and geared up here. He's got a fancy sword. Uh, yeah, Roland's going to lead this party because I'm the cleric and I uh, I don't do a lot of damage. Is there anything over here we should take a look at? No. Okay. So go through the left door. Um, oh, yeah, it's dark over here. Oh, yeah, sneaking over here. Excellent. Excellent. Light that torch up. There we go. And, and we got a box over here. Hello, box. Oh, you're empty, are you? Now, when I played before, there was rations in there. Okay, I see how it is. Oh, does he see me? There's, there's nothing in the box. Come on now. Okay. Um. Hello, sir. Sailor grabs you, wide-eyed. Wild-eyed. Dead emperors, it's coming for us. It whispered to me. Um, well, why don't you just calm yourself down, buddy? Half insane with terror, the, ter the sailor screams and lunges at you. I failed. All right. So be it. So be it. Uh, who's up first? Roland's up first. Roland is a mad sailor. He can... Uh, what can you do? Critical hits with slashing weapons cause bleeding. Okay. Do you have a spell? No, he doesn't do spells. He just swings at things. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just, uh... You're not... Yeah. Just swing at him. Switch places with me. And... Oh, okay. Just switch places with me. That's fine. I'm gonna cast a spell. I'm gonna heal myself. Um, yeah. Uh, my party? Okay. Do it. Okay, done. Now roll and smack the guy. There you go. Our job was to not kill these people, but okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can't, I get, oh, there's a wall. That's why I can't walk down there. Um, do I have enough? Uh, I got 14. I can like bless us, I guess. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Okay. There's a reason I never play clerics. I just sit here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just defend because I can't do much. Smack him, Roland. Roland got him for 31 experience. Let's take him. We got a short sword. Oh, hey, I'll use that. Yeah, can I have that short sword? Better than this dagger. Take that. Okay, there we go. Alright, let's head on down here. Uh, I guess we need to head up this... Ooh, the, the light's on. Maybe we can go over here. There's a ladder over there, too. 
Here we go. You emerge onto the deck and see two groups of men facing each other with weapons drawn. The ship shakes violently in the grip of a storm as lightning tears across the sky. Amidst the din of the storm and their frantic arguments, you bellow for the attention of the assembled crewmen and mercenaries. Both the ship's captain and the leader of the mercenaries you hired, a coarse thug of a man named Astavo, turn their attention to you. They look ready to use the unsheathed weapons in their hands at the slightest provocation. Uh, let's talk to the captain. Direct your attention to the ship's captain. You know him to be a reasonable but suggestible man. At present, his usually placid eyes are wild with panic or anger. Hey, buddy, I paid you for passage to the shore, huh? The captain lowers his weapon and speaks earnestly. The ghost of Idra is cursed. We heard tales and assumed them grog-drenched rumors only. But there is something between us and the shore that'll drag us all to a weary grave. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Not but glimpses. My men have seen the shadow of something deep in water stalking us. Nothing natural moves like that. Estavo glares murderously at the captain. Um... Yeah, foolish superstition, buddy. Come on, take us in. Something changes in the captain's expression. He stands tall. I will not order my ship and my men to certain doom. I wish I will not get any closer to the coast while I have command. Um, I'm sorry, captain, but you leave us no choice. Yeah, battle erupts. Okay, okay, okay. Charge in there. All right. Uh, this is okay. So red, reds. Surrounding guys are the ones we gotta deal with. Okay, so it's my. Oh no, Roland's up first. So Roland's gonna go over, and then don't you have a? Do you have a cool? It's just just that. And you're a charger. Doubles the bonus for charging. Oh, can I charge? Where's charge? Yeah, do that. Mm, all right, whatever. Uh, take out this guy. Oh, you, in one swing. Wow. Okay. Uh, no, don't uh, don't auto resolve. Okay, I keep hitting enter, but I don't mean to auto resolve with it with it. Okay, so ro rolling, smacking people. Uh, I'm bouncing around as well. Uh, I'm up next. Uh, I'm going to cast a spell. I do have not enough again. Um, I want that divine hammer. That sounds cool. Channel presence uh, stun somebody. Uh, let's just bless, I suppose. I have to stand back here and bless some folks. That's what I do. Just hang out. So me and the... Uh, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on, but the green folks down here are my mercenaries. These are the ship people that we are murdering at the moment. Um... Because that's what we do, I guess. Uh, oh, he's got like one hit point left. I got him. Yeah, take that. Four damage. Okay, defeat the enemies. We got 88 gold. I'm going to take all the cash. Club, dagger, dagger, dagger. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, wait. Do we want to wait? You rest your sword arm and survey the carnage. Then suddenly a large crash as something collides violently with the hull. Surviving mercenaries and crewmen alike fight to keep their footing as the ship lurches. Suddenly, huge monstrous tentacles burst from the water around the ship. For a split second before the terror sets in, you wonder what Estavo must be thinking at the monstrosities loom over him. As the monstrosities loom over him. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I wonder what he's thinking. After reaching their full height, the tentacles curve inward and smash into the ship. Some pierce straight through the deck, others snap the mast like they were matchsticks. You stand frozen in place. Bad idea. Through the haze of splintered wood and panic screams, you notice Roland. He throws himself out of the way of a tentacle but begins to fall overboard as the ship lurches once more. Roland! Roland! You dash towards the ship's fractured rail, dodging holes in the deck and wounded men beseeching you for help. Roland hangs by one arm on the side of the ship. Come on, Roland, get him. You lunge for Roland's arm, but he loses his grip and your fingers close only around thin air. You missed him by an inch. He falls wordlessly downwards. No, Roland! You watch as he is swallowed by the raging sea. The ship is listing fatally. And you see the great tentacles high above you, poised for the coup de grace. Abandon ship! As you jump, you hear the terrible rending of wood giving to flush. The impact of the water winds you, and waves pummel you down. The current, the currents beseech you to go deeper, even ever deeper. Peaceful, black. Am I dead? Oh, well, that's a that's a nice start. <laughs> Okay. Alright, alright. Where are we at? The villa of Lord Cotto, Baron. Two weeks earlier. Oh, okay. Um, hey doggy. Dog sniffs at you expectantly. Yeah, pet the doggy. Happily wags its tail as you pet it. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, aging armored man in the livery of House Baron stands and scowls at you. Eyes like coal peer out from the craggy face fringes top and bottom with wild white hair. Uh, I'll return his challenging stare. 
Older man crosses his massive arm, steps forward, and leans towards you. So, young sellsword, come looking for a scrap, have you? Though his voice is full of gravel, there is now a glint in his eyes, as though the old coals have begun to warm up. Um, stand aside, old man. I got business with your lord. Disappointment clouds the man's face. He calls after you. Very well, I suppose you're no longer the lad I remember. Lyra awaits at the main entrance. She'll take you to the master, for better or worse. I feel kind of bad now. Sorry, buddy. A woman stands before the main entrance of the villa. Her posture speaks of a graceful, coiled power. That of a dueling ace. No doubt she is the new master at arms for House Baron. As you approach, she offers a quick, neat bow. Uh, bow. Just low enough to be respectful. Greetings, Nook. Master Kato. Uh, Kato welcomes you back to the House Baron. He awaits you in his offices, but he graciously gives you, uh, gives you leave to tour the grounds of the estate before meeting with him. He seemed to think you would want it. Now, let's just get this over with. Very well. If it pleases you, the master is in his office. Just ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. I suppose you do, but I'll escort you nonetheless. A flicker of a smile plays across her face as she beckons for you to lead the way. Okay. So she's my party now. All right. The opulence has faded. The shadow's longer. Clearly much has changed since the last time you were here. Um, I didn't come here to reminisce. I came here to chat. Hello. Garsman dressed in the livery of a noble house baron. He nods respectfully towards Lyra. Um, hello. He has nothing to talk about. Can I trade? He doesn't want to trade. All right. Flanking the doorway, the two marble statues. Craftsmanship is stunning. The sight of the two women depicted fills you with sadness. What? Why? One you recognize immediately. Valeria Baron, mistress of the house. You remember her as a gray ghost, absent and unwell. The other statue depicts a girl you once knew so well. Embla Baron, daughter of the house, now a woman grown strong and clear-eyed. The likeness is none of her mother's cowed timidness. Okay, I'll be on my way. Silence is oppressive. Cato Baron, Baron sits tall in a tasteful, modest reception room. He looks uh, less imposing than you remember with a few more crow's feet. Never, uh, nonetheless, he has lost none of his composure of air on casual authority. Okay, okay. Take a seat across the formidable desk from him. The study, like the rest of the villa, is half-lit, giving a morose cast to its opulence. Old man's face creases into a tired but genuine smile which momentarily lifts some of the room's oppressive mood. It's a mercy to see you again. Your own man and in your prime. Your own man and in your prime, Kato says, before a frown consumes his smile. It's just a shame our reunion is overshadowed by the fates of those we love, but perhaps, perhaps together we can yet improve our collective circumstance. What do you want? Embla is missing. Kato's voice quivers momentarily, betraying his stoic features. I beg of you, Nook. Help me find my daughter. Help her return home, where she belongs. What happened to her? She left without notice a week ago. From the scant clues we had, we believe she boarded a ship bound for one of the outer isles. Idra. She went off on her own. Went of her own free will. At the time, I thought little of it. Since then, however, there have been reports. Grave ones. No one or word has left Idra in days. Rumor has it, even the Imperial Augurs are in the dark. I now know, uh... I know not how this touches my fate of my daughter, but she must be returned to me. One way or another. And where is she? Yo, why'd she go? Someone's been building in her for years, an aptitude of sorts, but I suspect you already knew. In any case, it's grown much stronger lately and drives her in ways I cannot understand. I suspect she's looking for answers. Well, what do you want me to do? Hire mercenaries, travel to Idra, and begin your search in the port of Horan. From there, I trust you to do what needs to be done. Spare no cost. Bring back my daughter. Mercenaries? Yeah, nothing else. Port will be dangerous enough. I recommend you begin by seeking out Roland Grey Eye. Oh, Roland. A crude but effective cell sword that I've made good use of before. I work alone. I trust your instincts, but I beseech you to consider him. He's a no great dinner guest, but he's been irreplaceable elsewhere. All right, fine. Kato shows you his upturned palms beseeching. I know this is a thing I ask of you is fraught with danger, but this is your chance at improving your fortune, materially and in honor. What do you say? Um, I'll do it for the gold. Kato smiles, smiles softly, visibly relieved, and for a moment he looks like the man you remember. You any final questions or matters to discuss? Nope, let's just get on with it. He stands with poorly concealed effort, and Nook! You stand, you meet his gaze. Return her to me! There is no other outcome of this affair. Um, you have my word, Kato. You're woken by the cacophonous cries of gold circling you. 
Your body is a mass of pain and exhaustion covered in a thousand cuts and scrapes. Oh, we're present time again. Slowly, you drag yourself from the cold water onto the res relatively safety, relative safety of a solid rock. Moments or hours pass as you lay still, trying desperately to, uh, to will some warmth back into your body. Finally, you manage to force your eyes open, but by some miracle, you are not only alive, but you find yourself on the shores of the cursed island of Idra. Strewn around you is a wreckage of the Zephyr. You see no other survivors. Nonetheless, the goal is ahead of you is clear. The goal ahead of you is clear. You must venture to rescue your childhood friend from whatever fate has befallen her. Through, uh, though, unless you can find equipment and companions, soon you may have cheated death in vain. Well, let's venture forth, shall we? Okay. Oh, we're on the overland map. Okay, let's look around. We've got uh, the lighthouse. Okay. Uh, there's some wreckage over there. I suppose we could check out the wreckage first. Hills, grassland. Yeah, let's go cruise on over here. Sandy dune mine parts of the Idrian coastline. Coastline. Odd pieces of debris. Okay. Let's check this out. Working bodies and debris line the rocky shores of Idra. In the distance, you can see what remains of the Zephyr's hole. Center. Okay. See some debris. Can we search it? Stench of rotting flesh fills your nostrils. Ahead of you, grotesquely misshapen crustacean horrors face greedily on the corpses of the dread, the dead crew. What? What? I see beach. I see corpse. I see corpse. Corpse. Ah, evil crabs. Okay, okay. Now I'm not really much of a fighter here. Can I handle a crab? He hasn't spotted me yet. I don't want to see those. He, he spotted me. Okay, you dang crab. I got you. Um, I'm going to divine hammer you. Boom. Yeah, take that. You dang crab. I got some chitin. I'll take it. I hope that was the only one because I got no more. <laughs> stuff. Uh, I could hide here in the grass if I wanted to. No, no need to. Uh, what you got there, buddy? Corpses under the ground. Tragically, these sailors appear to have made it to the shore only to be brutally murdered. The horrid wounds and gruesome dismemberments tells you that this must have been the work of mad men. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Are you all the same same story? Yeah. There's a box over here, though. What do we got? Rations. And a dagger. What do I have right now? I lost my sword. Uh, I've got a club. One to three blunt. What is this? One to two piercing. So I'll keep the. I guess I'll keep the club. As a reagent, I wonder what where we'd use that. I don't remember there being crafting in the game, but maybe there is. What is that? I see mud. That ain't mud. Small, intensely colorful flowers cover the ground. A grim monolith rises above the rugged landscape. Ancient and weathered, the stone must have stood here for centuries. Painted on it, crude spiral-shaped ruins, and at the base of the old monolith lies piles of eggshells, flowers, and fish bones. Examine. You make little of the symbols as you pick through the small pile of offerings. It occurs to you that these can't be more than a few weeks old. Okay, but I see a chest. How am I supposed to get over there, though? I can't get over there. Hmm. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to look at them. I don't want. I want to go around the monolith. Okay, we'll go down, we'll go down here. Can I get down there? Oh, I'm supposed to get over there. I want to get that chest. It's not gonna happen though. Um, I suppose we gotta leave this place and go to the lighthouse. Oh, there's a boat. Oh, another crab. Oh, I don't. I don't want to fight a crab. But what if he's mean? Oh, he has eight hit points. Oh, <laughs> I guess I could have looked at that last time. Uh, I'm not so scared of this crab. You know what, crab? I'm not so scared of you. Take that. Two damage. Yeah, take that. You hit me for what? Uh, I missed it. I hit you for two. His armor soaked four damage. Oh, he's kind of beating me down a little bit. Take that. You dang crab. Zero damage. Is uh, Okay. Am I going to die? I'm going to die. I'm gonna die. Uh, let's heal myself. Okay. Okay. Ow. Um. Um. Blind him. Okay. Run away. Uh, <laughs> I have died. Um. 
<laughs> Let's load. What was my autosave? What a mean crab! Okay, okay. You know what? I wanted to go to the lighthouse anyway. An ancient lighthouse rises steeply from the bluffs ahead of you. The beacon is still lit, though it flickers weakly. Yeah, yeah. Let's go in there. Uh, I, I dabbled before with, as a mage and as a rogue. Those guys are pretty tough. Do a lot of damage. I uh, wasn't expecting to go walking around without any help. Where's all my friends at? Oh, hey. Are you a friend? Who are you? Levin, not hostile. Excellent. One of the fortunate few sailors to survive the sinking of the Zephyr is crouching like a frightened rabbit in the tall grass. Don't kill me. I've only barely made it past those blasted hounds, and I just want to live. Hounds? Bloody monsters they are. Look at all diseased and rabid. I was trying to make my way there with the house to the lighthouse past the stairs just north of here, but that's where a whole pack of them were. Look for another route up there, lest you end up as the uh, poop. Especially if you don't have any weapons about you. Well, won't you just join, me, buddy? Okay. I made an. I've made a note. What is that? A fell hound. Uh, the note is don't. Uh, don't be a, a cleric to start off with. <laughs> I'm taking him out, though. Take that, buddy. Okay, I'll take a cash. Hopefully that's all the only one we've got. What are you? A whale skeleton. Okay, there's a box over here. I found some... Oh, a healing potion. Ah, excellent. Do I have a healing potion? Oh, that's my first one. Sure is spooky around here. Where's this lighthouse at? Where's our map? What's that thing over there? Did I miss something? Oh, hey. I'm curious about what I missed, but uh, yeah, we got stairs. Let's go up here. What? Oh, there's three of them! Uh oh. Okay. We're running away. Where's retreat? can't retreat. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm done for. Uh, all right. All right, Hellhound. I got you. Uh, I'm going to cast a spell. I'm going to cast... Oh, I have it all. Excellent. Take that one down. Okay. Here the rest of them come. I'm going to lose. Okay. I got this. Um, I've got my, my club in hand. Right? Club is now in hand. Was it on hand last time? Now we smack the doggy. Oh, seven damage. Oh, I got this. Take that. Here I was scared. These are no crabs. Uh, I'm actually going to defend here. Oh, he hit me hard. Okay, okay, we got to heal. I cannot heal. Um, Got him. Excellent. Okay, I got some ears. Okay. Hello. Uh, I think I have... Do I have a lantern? I don't. Pile of refuse. There's a box over here with a ration in it. What's it do? Eat when the party rests in a camp. Okay. A bunch of rations. Just walk through that door. I see some pelts, a stool, and a box. With, uh, with some potions, a lantern, hey, hey, and a short sword. I'll take all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, put that, is that the one of the six? We'll take that for sure. Um, I'll take the lantern and, and light that thing up also. Oops. Oh, I can't have both of them? Ugh, okay. Nothing in there. What is that? A table? Oh, we're back outside. Okay, I see. Let's go up there. I got the shark jaws and the campfire. Uh, entering into the heart of the tower, you round a corner and stop dead in your tracks. Rising up through the core of the tower is a grotesque-looking metallic monstrosity. The strangely organic shapes and odd geometries seem to writhe in the dim lights, and the laden silver coating casts a ghostly reflection on the walls. For all its alienness, you still recognize the arcane machinery, an ancient imperial re reticular node. You suspect that this lighthouse was once fueled by reticular energy, and that the machine was part of its operation. 
Still in some layer of dust, however, tell you that it's long since fallen in disrepair. And it, the lighthouse is now fueled by common oil. Okay. Weird. Let's go upstairs. Climb the narrow creaking stairs and towards the top of the lighthouse. You find the door barred from the inside and knock heavily. Moments later, you hear the bar lift. As you enter the lighthouse gal gallery, a haggard face peers out at you from the gloom. Moving closer, you see it belongs to an old man who clutches a makeshift spear tightly to his chest. Somehow, he looks both fearful and greatly relieved to see you. Mother of Maelstroms, the man croaks. Who are you, then? Who, uh, who did I summon? Come, sit. You must be weary. Sit, sit. The man gestures frantically to a battered chair in the corner. Uh, I'm shipwrecked here. By something foul. There are all manner of beasts in the deep oceans of our world, but never have I seen anything like this. A horror from beyond the natural it was that pulled down that ship. I saw it from my tower, I did, though I wish I did not have to bear such a sight. I can hardly believe that anyone could survive such a nightmare. Uh, well, I did. How did it, uh, the tides release you when so many others were claimed? The keeper leans in and fixes you with an unwavering gaze. Are you blessed? Or perhaps cursed is more like it. Um, neither, I think. What happened here? Something foul is growing on Idra. A taint on the island. There are lights. Lights as you've never seen, like those sailors from the high north talk of. But the colors. It's like they bleed into your very dreams. If you can manage to sleep, that is. It got to the animals first, though. Warped them into both mind and body. Made them cruel and dangerous. It ain't never seen nothing like it. I ain't never seen nothing like it. It's unnatural, I tell you. Worse still, Horan is dead as a tomb. Was a right bedlam of cries and screams two days ago, then nothing. Not as much as a lit candle at night. Only the deep itself knows the truth of these happenings, but I can tell you this, the island is doomed. The sea itself will rise to climb us. Uh, I need information. Yeah, anything. You mask. We're safe as we can be here. Uh, I'm looking for, um... Well, I guess about work? I'm looking for... What's your face? What of it? What can you do to help? This here beacon is all keeping the horrors from this island from my throat. Thing is, oil is running low and I got an area drop left in the storage. I need you to find me some oil. Before darkness takes us. Perhaps there's some in the wreckage of your ship. I stares absently mildly, absent mildly into the fire. Uh, something else. Um, tell me about Horan? Horan went dark about the same time as the animals ran amok. There was smoke on the wind and screams too, I could swear it. It sounded like battle, perhaps slaughter is more like it. But I think there's a camp of sorts, north of town, ragged tents and such. Survivors, perhaps? I thought about going there to see you for myself, but I changed my mind. The old man hangs his head dejectedly before continuing into a whisper. Safer here. Okay. I need a place to rest. Not up here. There's no room, and I need this uh, little light is left if I'm to make it through this madness. Downstairs, there's a pair of beds and a fireplace. It'll do just fine for you. Okay. Okay, forgive me. Not being more help. Okay, I, we need to go, I say, but it's just me. Okay, bye. Hmm. Is there anything else over? What is this? Just barrels? There's like, oh, that's a wall. Um, okay. There's a camp up north here. I can sleep down here, I guess. Yeah, let's rest. The prospect of resting in a proper bed is a rare treat for a mercenary traveling on the roads. So yeah, let's make camp here. Okay, yeah, let's rest. Um, begin activities. Sure, what kind of activities can we do? Oh, keep watch. Um, I'll forage, and then I'll rest. And then I'll, uh, and then I'll watch. And then I'll, that's it. Okay. I don't require any food, so I'm just gonna rest. Hit points are back. Excellent. Break camp. I guess outside we go here. There's still a yellow, oh, yellow blip is not necessarily, any, necessarily anything exciting. Let's just follow the road here and hope we don't find anything too scary because... I'd like to have a party member, but uh, not today, I guess. It's rough being a lonely cleric. Want to leave the current area? Yeah, let's do that. Let's follow this road up here. Been beset by fell hounds. <gasps> fell hounds again. Three of them! Okay, okay. I don't want to deal with three of them. Are they all uh, 12 hit points? They are. Okay. Uh, I suppose my, uh, I got a couple different things. I can either bless, it says my companion stat, that ain't me. 
I can blind one of them. I can divine hammer and just instant kill. I think we do that. Take that, buddy. Okay. One down. Uh, next. Did they not move? Am I murdering dogs that don't need to be murdered? Okay, here they come. He was shocked about how much I killed that guy. Um, I'm going to whack him. I think I'm using my sword. So I'm just going to whack him. Four damage. I'll take it. They got 12 hit points. This is going to hurt. Okay, hit him hard. Four is more than four, ideally. Nope. Nope. I got to hit him more than one. And I'm <laughs> I died again. <laughs> uh, the game, there is a difficulty. Um, I'm assuming it saves me back where... Oh, is it back here again? I never saved. I guess I should save. There is a way of changing the difficulty, uh, which perhaps I should do. Because, uh, yeah, I think I just need narrative mode. <laughs> anyway, Scald Against Black Priory. The prologue is out. I'll put links below, and you can check it out. The Steam page is there. Uh, thanks again for watching. And uh, I will be eagerly awaiting this one's release. And we'll probably do like a live stream or something on this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.